Hi friends, it's Dana here. Today I'm gonna read to you a book from the Cat in the Hats Learning Library called Oh Say Can You Seed. It's all about flowering plants and the teeny little seeds that they make. It's by Bonnie Wirth and illustrated by Estrides Ruiz. Here we go. I'm the cat in the hat, and I think that you need to come take a look at this thing called a seed. From the giant gum tree to this very small weed, every flowering plant started out as a seed. Plants are so useful to me and to you. Can you think of the ways? I will name you a few. The paper for books and the cloth for your pants come from trees and from cotton. That's two kinds of plants. The grains and the fruits and the veggies you eat, why, they come from plants too. And here's something neat. In deserts and woods and rainforests thick grows plants that can make you feel well when you're sick. Yes, plants serve us well and fill so many needs and flowering plants all started as seeds. Just what is a seed? You are wondering, maybe. Well, you might say a seed is a tiny plant baby. The best way for you to see just what I mean is to take a close look at a seed called a bean. Like all seeds, a bean comes in with three basic parts. Thing one and thing two, please bring me the charts. Part one is the first that I think you should know. It's the part that's the baby. It's called the embryo. To sprout, it needs food like you and I do, which brings us to seed part numero two. It's called cotyledon. Say, isn't that fun? This bean seed has two, but some others have one. Last comes the third part that you need to know. It's the coat which protects our cute bean embryo. To sprout a bean seed, keep it moist, but not wet. Keep it covered with dirt and then see what you get. In seven or so days comes the part that I love. A root spreads below and a stem shoots above. Now, in order to show you a grown bean plant to you, we've traveled in time for some months, maybe two. Thing two calls the part above ground the shoot system. Thing one calls the part underground the root system. To get a good look at the roots underground, it is better to make like a mole I have found. Roots are not pretty, they're twisty and hairy, and some roots look even a little bit scary. Roots anchor a plant and help it stand true. Roots suck up the water and minerals too. And roots keep the soil from just washing away. That's pretty important now, wouldn't you say? We've talked about roots. We have learned about them. Now it is time. We moved on to the stem. The stem is a pipe through which the water shoots. It's absorbed from the soil and passed up through the roots. It shoots through the plant and next, as you'll see, the leaves each turn into a food factory. Just like the rhinos protected with horns, the stem of a rose is protected with thorns. <laughs> leaves come in all shapes and all sizes. I found some small and some spiky, some big and some round. But the thing that all leaves have in common is this. They make their own food by photosynthesis. I'll say this quite loudly. I don't mean to be rude, but... Plants are the only living things on earth that make their own food. To do this, plants need water, minerals, and sun. And that's why the daytimes when food making's done. For your information and also for fun, hop in my shrink upper and let's see how it's done. 
the leaf makes CO2, carbon dioxide, through a stoma or pore. It works like a mouth and that's what it's for. Then the air gets mixed in with the water and sun and that's how the food making factory is run. I see by my clock that now is the hour to drop in and say hello to the flower. <laughs> Plants breathe out a gas that we breathe in. The name of that gas is oxygen. Thing two has a chart, he will share it with you, that shows what the parts of a flower all do. In the pistil are ovules, they're unfertilized seeds. The stamen holds pollen, which an ovule needs. An unfertilized ovule will never grow, and the pollen's the stuff that will fix that, you know? A flower's own pollen or another's, okay? That's where the bees play a role, by the way. To make honey, bees need to get nectar from flowers. They fly and they gather the sweet stuff for hours. The pollen sticks onto their bodies and legs. It falls off and sometimes it reaches the eggs. An ovule that's fertilized becomes a seed. Around it grows fruit upon which we feed. When we say the word fruit, do you know what that means? It means olives, nuts, grains, plantains, tangerines. <laughs> and apples and oranges and pineapples too, all kinds of plant foods that are healthy for you. Some fruits are juicy and men messy to munch on. Dry ones like nuts are nice to just crunch on. Not all plants with seeds give us edible fruit. Some plants have seeds that look weird or look cute. Burr seeds are hitchhikers that ride on your clothes and dandelion seeds sometimes fly up your nose. <laughs> Some seeds come in pods that explode like a sneeze. Other seeds may have wings and can fly on a breeze. But whether they stick or they blow or they fly, seeds bring us life, and now you know why. I see the sun is setting and here comes the moon. Your mother is calling, your dinner is soon. I hope you have learned from my little seed talk and now I will climb, climb up this giant beanstalk. <laughs> oh, that's the end. I hope you all enjoyed this wonderful book from the Cat in the Hats Learning Library all about seeds and the flowers that the flowering plants make. I just love seeds and I hope you do too. Have a great day. Thanks for reading with me.